Proudly, we hail. city where the American stage begins, here's another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Air Force. Somewhere over Upper New York State, a plane flies. A multi-engine plane. Identity unknown. It's a clear night, but many of the stars and the moon are covered by high-flying clouds. Why is this plane there? Where is it going? What is it going to do? It may be one of ours, lost, off course, or in trouble. Or it's an enemy plane carrying tons of destruction in its body. There's a vital job ahead for the Air Defense Command of the United States Air Force. Proudly we hail all the officers and men of the United States Air Force Air Defense Command and all the civilian personnel serve with that command. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment. But first, men, could this be you four years from today? A man skilled in the sort of technical knowledge that can pay him huge dividends the rest of his life? A man with the kind of experience that produces experts? A man with the confidence and advantages of world travel and a nation's respect and esteem. Now, I repeat, does this sound like you four years from today? Well, you know, it can be you in the United States Air Force. Yes, men, you'll go places faster as an airman in the United States Air Force. If you qualify, you'll receive the finest technical training from top experts of the country. And you'll earn while you learn. That's a good deal right there. And there are more than 400 different subjects in which you may be trained, preparing you for such growing fields as radar, medicine, personnel, meteorology, and many, many more. And as an airman, you can gain the valuable experience and enjoy the thrills of world travel. Yes, indeed. If you want a future that looks brighter, the United States Air Force will make it so. So you see your nearest Air Force recruiter right away. Get all the facts about your future as an airman. Remember, you'll go places faster in your United States Air Force. And now your United States Air Force presents the proudly we hail production, Danger Has Four Engines. <laughs> Tower, this is Peter King Scramble. Take off instructions. Phoenix King, use runway 31, winds west at 8 knots, altimeter setting 2992. Roger, Tower, and out. Did you get it, Art? Roger, Lee. Peter King, here are your scramble orders. Vector 315. Angels 10, contact direction center on button 10. Roger and out. I read you, Lee. Let's go. Peter King's scramble is on its way. There's an unidentified aircraft over Rome, New York. It may be one of ours, or it may belong to the enemy, on its way to destroy a major American city. Two jet planes, F-86Ds, piloted by Lieutenant Leland Rowe and Lieutenant Arthur Poole, are armed with air-to-air -air rockets and knifing through the night, ready to intercept it, to shoot it down if necessary. But who first spotted this plane? How did it all start? Well, it all started at a Ground Observers Corps observation post in the little town of Barneveld in Upper New York State. 
It's just a bit after 11.30, Grace. A little less than a half hour to go. Oh, I don't mind. Never seems long to me. <laughs> As the mayor's wife, I can sleep late in the morning. No, but you have to be up at the crack of dawn to do your farm chores. This 10 to midnight shift suits me just fine. There aren't many planes flying over at this hour. But on the other hand, if the enemy were going to try anything, it'd be more likely to try it at night. It's kind of dark tonight with those high-flying clouds pretty well hiding the moon and the stars. It's dark, but it's clear. The plane could fly low and avoid trouble by watching the lights on the ground. The ceiling must be up around 10, 15,000 at least. You... You hear that, Jim? Sounds like a pretty big one coming from the north. Uh, could be a twin-engine job. Uh, listen again. I think it's a multi. Yeah, you're right. It's a four-engine plane. And it's a little more northeast than due north, though. Well, I'll agree with you there. Yeah, it's heading this way. The sound of the engine's getting louder. I'm calling it in. Right. Aircraft flash. The operator's getting the Syracuse filter center. And the plane's flying very low. I guess about 2,000, not much more. Air defense, go ahead. Aircraft flash, one multi-engine, unknown, low, no time delay. Quebec Papa 44 Black, overhead, flying southeast. Check. Thank you. Strange. What's that, Grace? Well, why would a multi-engine be flying so low in this area? As you said, he can't be much above 2,000 feet. Doesn't make much sense if it's one of ours. The mountains is high as 6,000 feet, not too far away. But if it's an enemy plane trying to dodge the radar net... Jim, you don't think that... I don't know what you think, Grace. I just don't know. Multi-engine low, Quebec Papa 44 Black. That means that the pip belongs right there. Hey, that's the initial report on that one, isn't it? Oh, it's been a quiet night. That's the first call in I've had in ten minutes. Maybe I should have stayed at the dorm tonight and studied. Ah, you wouldn't do that. I've got a schedule here. When you're scheduled for duty, you're scheduled for duty. Oh, come on, Charlie. Where's your sense of humor? You know I was only joking. But seriously, I've got to buckle down. If I don't start studying, I'm never going to be graduated from Syracuse University. Well, take it from me. Speaking as a cab driver, I say don't make that mistake. I know what it means not having a college education. Oh, you haven't done so badly, Charlie. You've got yourself a nice wife, three good-looking kids, and a house in a pretty nice part of Syracuse. There are lots of guys with college educations who don't have half of that. No, I'm not complaining, but... I'd still like to have had a college degree. Hey, that guy you're going to marry, he's a college grad, isn't he? Lee? He sure is. With honor. Leland Rule. Now, that's a name that's real crazy. Well, maybe to us it sounds a little different, but Lee's from New Orleans, and down there it's a very common name. Way back somewhere his ancestors were French. Oh, don't make a mistake. I think it's a fine name if you really love him. Think of it. In a couple of years after you finish school, you'll be Mrs. Leland Rue. I know you're going to be very happy. I think so, too. He's coming up here this Saturday for the big dance, and he's bringing a friend of his as a date for my roommate. Gee, I can hardly wait. <laughs> they say that's love. But you better get all of your studying and done. Remember what you said a few minutes ago. I will. Don't worry. I'm going to get ahead all the rest of this week so I don't have to worry about books or classes all weekend. Smart girl. Uh-oh, there goes my telephone light. Must be another report. Air defense, go ahead. Aircraft flash, one multi-engine, very low, no time delay. Quebec Papa, 3-3, three, three, northwest one half mile, flying southeast. Roger, check. Thank you. Seems to be a second report on that multi that Barnville called in a few minutes ago. Yeah, I think so. As soon as I get this second pip down on the map, I'll have a track and I'll call it into the direction center. Let's see. Quebec Papa 3-3 is just about here. 
I have an actual on. Quebec Papa, 331146. Direction southeast, track number 45. One multi, low. Thank you, Phil, the center. Roger and out. <laughs> That's strange, Charlie. I hmm? just noticed. What? It is multi. What's it doing down so low over terrain like this? Hey, you're right. It shouldn't be flying so low. Unless it's in trouble or lost. But if it were an enemy plane trying to dodge the radar by flying lower than the surrounding mountains... Oh, it couldn't be. Yes, it could, Charlie. Americans make a mistake when they keep saying and thinking that it can't ever happen. But there are lots of planes today that can fly over the North Pole or across the ocean and drop bombs, and some of them could even get back home without refueling. Yeah. It's kind of frightening. Well, it's good to know that we have fighter interceptor squadrons on the alert all the time for just that kind of emergency. Hey, your fiancé, he's a lieutenant in one of those squadrons, isn't he? He sure is. Hey, you suppose he could be on this mission? Now, take it easy, Charlie. We don't know yet that there is any mission. It could be just a scheduled flight. Direction center could know all about it. Yeah, it could be. Time like this, though, that makes me glad I'm part of the Ground Observer Corps. This one could be the first real enemy plane to try and bomb us. And if it got stopped by the Air Defense Command, it would be because the GOC was on the job. Charlie, it proves we're needed. That we're important, too. Yeah, that's right. The radar net can only do only so much. It can't cut through mountains when a plane is purposely flying low. Below the highest mountains around, radar can't work very well. And then human eyes and ears have to take over. And they do, and they can. And that's the thing that'll save us. If. If what, Charlie? If the Air Force boys can find the plane in time. You are listening to the proudly we hail production... Danger has four engines, and we will return in just one moment for the second act. It's tailor-made for young men. What is? Why, the United States Air Force. You see, young men like a job with a future, a job that enables them to go places faster, a job where they can learn technical skills and gain the kind of experience that belongs to lifelong security. Well, if you qualify, that's the kind of experience you can get as an airman. Young men like to earn while they learn. And as an airman, you'll receive full pay all the while you train. And young men like a job with plenty of travel. They like to get around. Well, airmen go where the Air Force goes. Enjoy all the thrills and advantages of world travel. And young men like to belong. They like to be looked up to, respected. Well, believe me, when you're an airman, you belong to the greatest young man's team in the country. You wear the coveted Air Force blue uniform admired by all. Yes, indeed, it's no wonder young men like the United States Air Force. And believe me, you will too, because the Air Force is tailor-made for young men. As an airman, you'll have the opportunity to qualify for any of more than 400 specialized subjects, receive valuable training in such fields as radar, photo mapping, meteorology, air traffic control. You'll go places faster, so see your nearest Air Force recruiter right away. Make your future a sure future as an airman in the Air Force. As a leader in Air Force Blue, you ensure your country's future and your own with a real fine technical training program. You're a skilled specialist, confident of your ability and proud of your mission. So believe me, fellas, you see your local Air Force recruiter and do it today. It's tailor-made, your Air Force, for you young men. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of Danger Has Four Engines. It's a multi-engine plane. It was first spotted by the Ground Observer Corps. It was reported a second time by a Ground Observer Corps post. The filter center plotted its course on a large map and then called its position 
direction, altitude, and type into the direction center. Now comes the big question. Is it one of ours, or is it one of the enemy? If it's an enemy plane, it has to be contacted and destroyed before it reaches its target. And this is a job for the Fighter Interceptor Squadron of the Air Defense Command. But first, the Air Defense Direction Center has to be sure. If the plane belongs where it is, it has to be left alone. Thank you, Phil DeCenter. Now to check on this baby. Is there or isn't there a multi-engine scheduled to be over near Rome at this time? Well, let's see. One C-47 due to be over Syracuse at 11.10. Well, that's not it. Report says a multi-engine, that means more than two engines, and the C-47 has only two. Two commercial flights due into Syracuse from the west around midnight. Well, if it's one of those, that pilot is sure lost. Multi, nope. As far as flight plans show, there's no plane definitely supposed to be in that area heading in that direction at this time. Hmm, I'd better call Stuart and fast. Get me the hot room at Stuart. Emergency. Roger. Now, where is that Syracuse shoulder center's last week? Oh, there it is. Stuart, this is direction center. Scramble 2, Quebec Papa 3735, 1146. Direction southeast. Track number 45. One multi, very low. Scramble 2, Quebec Papa 3735, 1146. Direction southeast. Track number 45. One multi. Very low. Roger. Roger, Stewart, and out. This is where you came in. This is how our story started. The two F-86Ds piloted by Lieutenants Leland Rowe and Arthur Poole have just taken off. The time... 11.56, just 20 minutes after the first spotting of the plane over Barneveld in New York. The two pilots check with direction center now that they're in the air. They, too, know where this unidentified aircraft is. This bogey in the sky that could be loaded with bombs that could spell death. This is Peter King airborne at 56. Two chicks vectoring 315, angels 5 and climbing. Peter King, this is Direction Center. Bogey at 12 o'clock, 150 miles. Direction Center, this is Peter King. Roger and out. You get it all, Art? Roger, Lee. This bogey could sure be it, coming over the pole across Canada and then down across New York to its target. Roger. And if it is, we better get it before it gets us. Roger, Art. Roger and out. <laughs> Defense. Aircraft flash. One multi-engine. Very low. No time delay. Quebec Papa 24. East two miles. Heading south. Check. Thank you. Another report on that multi. And how? And it seems to have changed direction. It's heading south now. It could be right on its way to New York. <laughs> direction center. I have an actual on. Quebec Papa 24, 1201. Direction south. Track number 45. One multi, low. Roger, filter center, and out. Calling Peter King, calling Peter King. This is Peter King, go ahead. Peter King, bogey now at one o'clock, heading due south, 100 miles. Roger and out. Two silver dots streak through the night, searching, probing. They're looking for a plane, a big multi-engine plane. But in the vastness that is the sky, this is like looking for a needle in a haystack. Fortunately, the two planes are not alone in their search. At Ground Observer Corps posts, there are hundreds of pairs of eyes also straining to see. 
Hundreds of pairs of ears reaching out to hear. Phone lines are open and ready. Hands are alerted, alerted to plot the plane's course. This chain of defense, both military and civilian, is ever tightening on this threat in the night. This danger with four engines. Bogey now at 12 o'clock, low at approximately 2,000 feet, 20 miles. Roger and out. Got it, Lee. What now? Oh, well, we better start getting down. Keep your eyes open. Don't worry, I will. It's clear enough tonight. You ought to be able to spot the plane from quite a distance. I wish those clouds weren't covering up the moon. Uh, you can't have everything, Art. Be thankful you have good eyes. Up ahead, Art. Twelve o'clock. You see something? I think so. Could be. We'd better get in for a closer look-see. Roger. Rockets ready? Roger. This is Peter King. Tally ho. Roger, Peter King. Identify aircraft if it's an enemy. Destroy. Roger and out. All right, I'm going to make a pass. Give me some cover. Roger. Sure. Looked like one of ours, a C-54, but you better make a pass yourself. Roger. Well, Art? It's a C-54, all right. I wonder if it's lost or what. I'm going to make another pass and try to get its Air Force number. Roger. Is that what you see, Art? Uh, two, eight, three, two, one. Roger. Direction center, this is Peter King. Plane identified as a C-54. Air Force 28321. Heading 180 at 2,000 feet. Waiting further instructions. Peter King, your identification verified. Return to base. Roger. Peter King, well done. Roger and out. Me too. I missed you. Say, look at Art and your roommate dancing. They seem to be getting along just fine. Well, that's because I have a terrific roommate. Well, Art isn't so bad himself. Hmm, not bad. But I prefer you. <laughs> well, I'm glad you do. I was thinking about you a lot the other day. Oh, only the other day? Well, particularly the other day. Why? We had a lot of excitement down at the filter center with an unknown multi flying very low at night. Say, that's a coincidence. Art and I had a little trouble with one ourselves. Uh, what night was it? Uh, Tuesday. <laughs> no fooling. Uh, about what time? I think it was just about 11.46. 11.46. Mm -hmm. Well, I have news for you, Miss Quinn. You and I were working on the same bogey. While I was taking the calls on it, I was wondering whether you might be. You know, it was quite a hunt. From all indications, it looked like the real thing. Was it, Lee? When I didn't read anything about it in the papers the next day, I figured it wasn't. But if it was one of ours, why did you have to go after it? I thought all planes left flight plans before they took off. And if it was lost or in trouble, it could have contacted someone by radio and reported itself instead of sneaking in and scaring everybody. Well, it, uh, seems it didn't want to. What do you mean it didn't want to? It was all part of an air defense command test. They flew low on purpose to simulate an enemy plane trying to dodge our radar net. And they kept radio silence to add to the effect. Did you find it in time? <laughs> we sure did. It helped that the night was clear, but... You know, I'm, um, I'm proud of you, Janet. Oh, Lee. 
I should be the one who's proud of you. No, no, no. I was just doing my job, but you and all the other Ground Observer Corps people are volunteers, giving up your free time. And you did a professional job. You may not know it, but you made our mission possible and helped make it successful. Without you spotting it in the first place, we still would be on the ground. It proves something. When the greatest air force in the world and the civilians it's protecting work together, well, that's a powerful combination. <laughs> Just like we're going to be. You and me. Yes, Lee. Just like you and me. You know, it's often been said that to speak in terms of a man's interest is to win that man as your friend. Well, that's what the friendly people over at the Air Force recruiting stations all over the country are doing every day. They're telling hundreds of career-minded young men about the outstanding opportunities available to them in the United States Air Force. And they're describing career opportunities that suit every young man's interests and aptitudes. For example, well, if you're an amateur photographer like myself... You can turn your basic knowledge into a colorful and highly interesting career by taking full advantage of the free training available in the Air Force Photography School, the world's finest. Then on the other hand, well, maybe you're interested in the new field of guided missiles or rocket propulsion. Well, here too you can get free training that qualifies you as one of the best military technicians in the world. Whatever your interests, whatever your aptitudes, your Air Force has a job for you. So you visit your nearest Air Force recruiting station at your earliest opportunity and find out how you can become an airman in the United States Air Force. It's a career opportunity of a lifetime. Be a key man. Become an airman. Train in one of the 400 jobs vital to your country and learn to perform that job all over the world wherever the Air Force is stationed. Well, how do you find out about this? Find out about your opportunities in Air Force Blue? It's very simple, fellas. See your local Air Force recruiter. Complete information about you in Air Force Blue. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this radio station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Air Force, and this is Dick Herbert speaking, and inviting you to tune in to the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail.